You were a pretty uh, decent defender in your day. One of the good Irish lads at the moment. The defence, obviously, Nathan Collins. Another big move for him. Mm. Might have surprised a few people that he's left Wolves after just one season. What did you make of the, the big money move to Brentford? Um, it's good for him, really, because he wants to be playing games of football. Um, and you're just worried that, you know, having only just signed, they might hold on to him for a couple of years. He's on the bench and maybe he slips down the pecking order a little bit. Um, but look, for us as a nation, for him to be playing regular football is great for him. But he's got a body work, you know, from Stoke to Burnley, um, you know, that, that's under his belt. So it, it's obviously Brentford have seen his year at, on, under um, under manager at Wolves hasn't worked out for him and they're willing to take a chance on him and I uh, wish him all the best. And is he quite a footballing defender rather than just a, you know, a bit of a hard man? Yeah, I think you have to be nowadays. Yeah, I have to be able to handle the ball with the way teams want to play. Um, I think the days of just being a defender and a blocker and a stopper are kind of slowly edging away. You know, you need to be able to handle the ball. You need to be able to start attacks. You need to be able to step into midfield with the ball and be comfortable. And he's certainly that, as we've seen so many times in an Ireland shirt. I'm just going to stick with one uh, male-related football question again. Your old boss is uh, signed up for another year, Roy Hodgson of Palace. Staggering. Like, honestly, the man's longevity, enthusiasm and energy is something I would um, endeavour to have at his age and his love for the game. Um, and I even just saw some clips of him there welcoming the players back for pre-season. He's still as jovial, as happy and as energetic as, as, as when I saw him five years ago. And that's only good. And, uh, and I wish him luck as well. Stuff. Listen, uh, countdown is well and truly on now for the, uh, the next World Cup, the Women's World Cup. I suppose it's the first really heavily featured Women's World Cup that we've had in this country, primarily because the Irish team uh, have qualified. Um, I suppose, what are the players kind of going through at the moment? They're in this camp now, they've been there for a long time. The nerves and the excitement must be just growing every day. Yeah, the nerves will be the unknown because none of them have been down this road before. You know, it's a long camp to be involved and they've never played at this level before in a World Cup. But regardless of how they do, you know, they've brought women's football on, you know, so much in the last in the last number of months. The amount of young girls now that are taking an interest in soccer, and it, if you boost the numbers, you, you boost the, the the playing opportunities, and we'll only get better and better. So, look, it's a great thing that they've done, and I wish them all the best down there. And listen, it, it's it's not something that can be eased in. I know Katie McCabe's had a bit of experience with this with big crowds. Can you remember when you went from maybe playing in front of maybe a few hundred people to all of a sudden 20, 30, it's what, 60, 80,000 of their opening game against Australia, the host nation? Yeah, I can. I remember I was, when I played minor football, when I played for Cork in 99, the first time Parky Keeve in a minor uh, Munster final, 50,000 people. It's daunting when you first walk over the stadium and see that because I'd never seen anything like that before because the stadium was full because the senior game was on after us. So, um, But you just got to learn to block all that out, focus on the, the task at hand, and I'm pretty sure that that's what Vera Poe would be messaging the players. You know, to stay focused on the task at hand, not let your mind drift to things before or after games. It's just staying focused on the game plan, minute by minute, minute by minute, and I'm sure they'll lose proud. And finally, look, any chance of getting out of the group? That's a tough group, Nigeria, Canada always one of the favourites on Australia as well. Well, look, Vera Poe will have a, a plan up her sleeve and she's done extremely well to get the team this far. So I'm sure she'll have something up her sleeve and um, she'll give it her level best. But like I said, the girls have done us proud and know it's about the next generation coming through and the generation after that. And, and, and women's football in Ireland is, is really well and truly put on the map now.